gonna go for an S smash. I don't know. I feel like um, T is, is running. It. Oh! Oh my God! The corner is a very infamous term in all fighting games. Even though the options in and out of the corner vary throughout many fighting games, the general concept of having less options in the corner remains consistent. This can open up many different ways to pressure your opponent to open up their defense. Many champions have been crowned because of their understanding of this situation and being able to capitalize to destroy their opponent. Welcome to the Pressure Series, where we will be teaching you how to apply pressure in Smash. If you've been enjoying the content, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications on upcoming videos. The first thing we want to go over is the corner, but before we get into corner pressure, we must first break down how a player gets into the corner. At lower percents, players usually find themselves in the corner after losing neutral around center stage, causing them to get hit into the corner. At higher percents, players usually find themselves in the corner after a ledge trap. If the player ledge trapping is positioned to cover roll but they do not cover the other options, their opponent is usually in the air or in the corner. The last way a player can find themselves in the corner is if they position themselves there through neutral. Dash back is a very strong option, but if done too many times with little stage control, you will end up in the corner. Some characters can put themselves in the corner if they have strong tools out of the corner, like charge moves or spin dash. Some zoning characters and players actually prefer to play from the corner because it makes it harder to cross them up, but it does come with a risk. When a player is in the corner, they are closer to the blast zone. This is a big reason why center stage control is so strong. Even if you're not in kill percent, if you get hit off stage while in the corner, you will be positioned farther off stage, giving you less options for recovering. If your opponent doesn't overextend on the edge guard, they will get a ledge trap or a juggle situation if you force high positioning with double jump or other tools. Your options in the corner are also limited. While in the corner, dash back is not a very strong option because you end up off stage. You can run off stage and come back with a hitbox, but this is used more as a bait if your opponent extends on the corner pressure. With limited reposition options, your opponent can force favorable situations with safe pressure. This will force you to do options that your opponent can react to or open up situations where your opponent can commit into you after conditioning your defensive options. This is why at top level, you will see players fight for center stage and avoid positioning in the corner. Smash Ultimate is the only Smash game with unit collision. This means you cannot move through another character unless they make themselves intangible with things like roll or spot dodge. In previous Smash games, running through your opponent was a very common and strong option out of the corner. Because of this, it was very hard to corner fast characters, but in Ultimate, that is not an option, so you can halt fast grounded movement with your character. This makes corner pressure a lot stronger in Ultimate, so you can push for more damage and even the KO. Understanding the resources a player has while in the corner is the first step to improving your corner pressure. The most common and safest option in the corner is shield. Making sure to pressure your opponent's shield at a safe distance with pokes will wear it down and start to force other options, otherwise they will get their shield poked. Also, be very careful for characters with strong back throws. Many players will position themselves at the ledge to fish for an overextension that will result in a shield grab into the KO. Work around your opponent's out of shield options to prevent turning a pressure situation into one that loses your stock. Jump, roll, and attack will be the most common options outside of shield, so you'll be spacing and baiting around those. Think of roll as an invincible dash that has some end lag. With this tool, your opponent can go through one of your attacks and try to cross you up or get past the attack and get out of the corner. If you have enough range on your attacks, this won't matter most of the time. But if you don't have absurd range on your side, then the timing of your attacks are key. Mixing up the timing of your shield pressure will make it harder for your opponent to roll through your attacks. Spacing your safe moves over and over can be effective, but switching the tempo and the repositioning to react instead of swinging is a core aspect to corner pressure. 
What you want to do is see how your opponent responds to your rhythm of attacks and counterplay accordingly. Mixing in grounded options after aerials is the most common way of doing this. Another thing you can do is mix in rising aerials after a falling one instead of doing falling aerials one after another. You can also empty land instead of doing an aerial into a grounded option, dash back, or set yourself back up into the air for another potential aerial. With all this, you can also mix in waiting a little before doing your next option to throw off your opponent's timing of their defense, or catch a panic defense option like roll or spot dodge and react from there. When going for tactics like this, it is very important to keep in mind your opponent's burst options. Burst options are quick attacks both movement and frame data wise. Being able to cover a lot of ground and combining it with a fast attack is a tool you have to respect while applying corner pressure. When repositioning, you can get caught by burst options, so make sure you space around these options and have defensive options ready. If your opponent has platforms, good landing aerials, and or air drift, jumping out of the corner will be more viable for them. If you have strong anti-air options, this will be great for this situation as you can reposition and react to where they are falling. Their strongest tool after jump will be their double jump to bait you into committing into the area where you think they will land. Other characters have double jump like resources on top of their double jump, so chasing them down will be harder but still possible with precision. Try not to commit too hard unless you strip away these resources. This is where the push and pull of information and the conditioning comes into play. Some players prefer to attack, and other players prefer to inch their way out of the corner with defensive options. But the best player knows how to do both while mixing up the rhythm in which they do it. When you are able to get important information on when and how your opponent likes to react to certain pressure options, make sure to get a strong punish out of it. Most lower level players will see a pattern and immediately punish. In Smash, taking the stock is the hardest thing to do at top level play. So saving a specific punish for the KO is an important aspect to optimizing the information you get from your opponent. Slant and hurtbox shifting will affect how you apply and respond to corner pressure. Some characters have great crouches and crawls, so they can lower their hurtbox. This is a great tool to use, especially combined with stage slants. Duck under your opponent's corner pressure to set up whiff punish situations or to reposition yourself out of the corner. Make sure when you are applying corner pressure on slanted stages to sink your aerials as low as possible or use more grounded hitboxes. Make sure to change how you corner pressure on different stages as slants, platforms, and blast zones change each of these situations. Knowing every character's corner pressure tool and tools to get out of the corner takes a lot of work and study. I suggest focusing on the character you play first, then move on to characters you struggle against. Watching a top level player that plays your character is the first step to seeing what tools they use for the corner situation. Try to break down the reason they use specific moves and timings. If you like to use certain moves that they don't use, ask yourself why they don't use those moves. It's okay to mix in what you like with what you've learned from watching others. So let's dive into some tournament footage and break down some corner pressure. T right now with nice. Oh, trying to go for an S smash. I don't know. I feel like uh, T is, is running. Oh! Oh my. Pac-Man starts this off with an up air juggle. He ends up getting hit, but is able to set up a corner situation after an overextension from the hero. Pac-Man uses the Galaxian to pressure the entire corner area and gets a hit. Instead of trying to convert off the hit, Pac-Man re-grabs the Galaxian and waits in shield to react to his opponent's options. Pac-Man then reacts to Hero burning his double jump and follows his air drift with jump out of shield. With Galaxian in hand, Pac-Man sets up a kill confirm in the side B off the platform. This is an amazing example of a corner reset 
netting into a very early KO and the game win. Wolf is able to set up a ledge trap situation from a rising nair in neutral. He ledge traps by roll and moves towards center stage to lure Joker into attacking out of the corner. With a parry, Wolf is able to set up the same situation as before. Wolf again pressures with rising bear by roll to make Joker feel like a grounded option is a safer approach. With a fast fall and a dash away, Wolf gets Joker to overextend, setting up the same situation once again. With a trade, Wolf is positioned above Joker and falls close enough to make Joker think he will commit to a falling aerial, but Wolf jumps back in time to reposition and react. Fair connects on Joker's roll, which forces Arsene out. This eventually sets up Wolf to line up an angled down forward tilt on Arsene's recovery to close out the stock. He needs another 10 or so percent. He's going to fish for the back row and snap gets that. Now let's get into some examples of corner pressure setups. Terry's forward tilt is a great tool for starting corner pressure. It's a quick poke that is invincible and also has an option to cancel into a special move after connecting. It also does decent shield damage, which can set up shield break situations. Forward tilt on block into dash can cover many options on reaction. You can also call out other options after conditioning for the stock. The most important takeaway is that you want to center your corner game around low risk pokes that allow you to reposition and react, or cover multiple options after the poke. Another great tool to set up these situations on block is Pyra's forward tilt. This move is a little slower, but has great range, disjoint, and shield push. This can also hit opponents in the air because of how large the hitbox is. Most characters can't punish a spaced Pyra forward tilt on block, which gives Pyra time to set up for another hitbox to extend the corner pressure. I hope you learned a lot and enjoyed the video. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you want to see more content. Also, make sure to leave a comment and tell us what kind of pressure you'd like us to go over in the next pressure video. Class dismissed.